Aren't all religions basically the same? What about those that never heard the gospel? And is Jesus the only way to salvation? These are some of the questions we want to explore in this series on world religions and new religious movements. Thy kingdom come. The Lord is the king and the king is coming again. In any study of world religions, there might be hundreds of religions to cover, but we want to cover the five major world religions. Those are Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Judaism, and then there's also Christianity. Of those five world religions, it covers 75% of the population of the planet. So you're much more likely to meet someone from one of these five major religions. Some of the things I want to cover first are called demographics of world religions. So for example, Christianity is the world's largest religion on the planet with 2.3 billion followers. Islam is the second largest religion with 1.8 billion. Judaism has about 14 million followers, followed by Hinduism with a billion and Buddhism with about 500 million. One particular category is nuns, not N-U-N-S, but N-O-N-E-S. And there is a misconception in this category. While it does include atheists and agnostic, they're not purely secular. In fact, well over half of that category finds themselves to be spiritual, but they don't particularly adhere to any religious tradition. In the late 19th and early 20th century, scholars said society would become more secular as we progress technologically. They were wrong. The world has become more and more religious. And one thing the 21st century is going to produce is a very religious century. As we look at demographics projecting into the future, every religion is projected to grow. Christianity by 2050 is expected to have three to three and a half billion followers, followed by Islam's three billion followers as well. In fact, between those two religions, two thirds of the planet will either be Christian or Islamic with the other third being all the other religions. Hinduism is expected to grow as well, followed by Judaism, an expected stasis or a stationary growth of Buddhism. Each of these world religions tend to be geographically located in certain spots of the world. For example, most Hindus live in the country of India and in Nepal. About 80% of all Hindus live in that region of the world. For Buddhism, it's Southeast Asia and East Asia, such as China and Japan, Korea and Thailand. For Islam, it's the Middle East and Indonesia are the primary population centers for that religion. Christianity is the one religion that's a worldwide religion. It's found all over the place. In fact, historically, while Christianity has been dominant in the West, such as Europe and America, for the past 50 years or so, there have been more Christians outside of Western culture than inside of Western culture. It's the first worldwide religion. And Judaism is split between the United States and Israel, with more Jews actually living in the United States than in the country of Israel. In fact, there are more Jews in New York City than in Jerusalem. So as we're moving forward into the 21st century, we see religions are growing and becoming more and more prolific. And it's important to engage them well and to understand the world religion so we can have meaningful conversations and discussions.